Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And greetings from uh, the beautiful southwest coast of Spain. Uh, my name is Derek Fleming, and today I would like to discuss the impacts of social media and the advances in technology, and how these advances have affected how we actually communicate. To understand this process and these impacts, we will conduct an interdisciplinary approach. First, I would like to start talking about globalization, and the reason I do this is because I need to demonstrate how global communication has become. The way the communication methods have expanded in society has affected the way we interact with each other. And what is important to note here is that this shift in personal relationships has happened across countless countries and it has happened also without any distinction to racial, demographic, or any level of education. This phenomenon has clearly had an effect in the global populace. Uh, and it has specifically had social, political, economical, and culture effects across the world. We can all agree that the world's population has made great progress in these capabilities of communicating through the internet specifically. This progression, however, has impacted how we relate to each other and how we can communicate with, with people, and, and that has also has changed. Traditional relationships still exist, of course, but the introduction of social media and instant communication has complemented the way we communicate with each other. We also have to be cautious with this assessment because these advances do not always complement personal relationships. What was the original purpose of social media? Well, the largest social media site, which we all can agree is Facebook currently, was actually developed uh, from a college dorm. A group of college students wanted to have a way of sharing information to use college projects. Now we fast forward to 2014 and we now have the largest media site and expanding the ways we share information like never before. Excuse me. As a global example, this site has a tremendous impact and a tremendous success in the last decade of how we communicate. So much, in fact, that people are relying and obtaining information through there. It started with just communication as far as messaging. Now we have photographs, videos, social media sites uh, that have company, companies have those uh, sites. We also have newscasts and they all communicate with each other through that single tool, which is Facebook. A recent study by the Pew Research Journalism Project supports this. My theory of that more and more people are actually using this communication method, and this goes across boundaries, not just in the United States. Here in the United States, however, the Facebook method, using Facebook, is basically the second choice behind local TV as a source of political news, surpassing CNN and Fox News. That's pretty impressive. And that shows how we also have a political aspect of this and how it can affect um, the way social media is being used. What I would like to talk about is how we can make an interdisciplinary approach to understand this process. In the political world, social media has had a great growth and is actually a front runner for their political campaigns now, for, for political campaigns in general. And not only in the U.S., I may add, but this has happened on foreign countries around the world as well. I would also like to take the time to explain the evolution of social media because I consider it very important to understand its impact in global society and how it's reached um, globally. So let's we'll take a quick snapshot in the last 10 years. First off, global information sharing. From day one, this has been the goal of social media. We share information globally. Uh, this has correlated directly to enabling people to share information like never before. And I'm not talking about just files per se or just messaging, which we could also do that via email, right? What I am referring to, however, is about sharing photographs, status updates, sharing feelings, obtaining news, etc. And what's really important also is advertising. Advertising is huge now in social media and that's having an economic impact in the way we actually use this, this site. All of this is happening at an absolute global scale. There's no limitation of boundaries. The only limitations that we do have are governments that censor these websites. Uh, but those are very few instances that actually happen. The most, most general population in the world has access to the internet. They're making great progress in this, and this shows how much of a reach and impact this really has. Normally, in Facebook, is to share information with, with friends and family and loved ones, but the problem is we also share with strangers as well. And this is sometimes intentional, sometimes it isn't. 
depends on how you have your settings set up on Facebook, people will or will not see it. So it's important to note that. And this is where I see an actual global connection because we can literally connect to anybody who has any, any internet uh, service to any part of the world as long as they have Facebook. And at any time, we can do this. So if I'm connected right now, I'm actually connected from Spain. And you will be seeing this presentation who knows where. This shows how connected the world is and how boundaries have been eliminated by the usage of internet connections. With that said, we could also talk about the speed of communication because every new invention that has happened in the um, last, uh, technological years, if you will, has always been more faster, more potent, more efficient way of sharing information. Speed has increased so much that we no longer need a computer um, to, to go to social media. We can use that just with our phone. We can connect, up, take a picture, upload it, send it to anywhere in the world just from our phone. That's as quick as everything has happened. What I also like to note is the audience reach. We did talk about that earlier, but um, the audience reach, I think it's really important because we can literally talk, communicate, and, and, and share information with thousands, millions of people all over the world. And Thomas Friedman said that the world is truly flat. And I think he's really he's correct with that assessment, especially in the last 10 years. Um, 10 years ago, we would have had a hard time uploading a video on the internet. But now with the creation of YouTube, that was essentially eliminated. And from that point on, anybody on the internet could upload a video, publish it, and comment on billions of others. Expanding my research, I did find another interesting article about the internet and how, of, how often it is used when interacting with people. Uh, Lickerman, who actually he made a, an article in tw 2010, he offered a balanced approach on this increased trend in communicating through the internet and the search of love and friendship. What his focus was was actually social media, so that's why I thought it was important. And what he did, he elaborated on the repercussions of internet usage, or over usage, if you will. One of his major points in this article is the fact that communicating instantly does not provide the necessary relationship qualities that we could discover in face-to-face -face communication. One of these examples is um, he showed how superficial these uh, relationships can be. For example, when we get a text, we say something funny, and we get an LOL in the back, laughing out loud, right? Um, how many people do you think actually are out there laughing out loud? If you think about it, not many. So that really shows how artificial these, excuse me, these methods of communication have become. Um, so that's important to understand that all the information that we get is not truly genuine. Another imp important consideration I like to talk about is how internet usage and how um, hum human kinetics, which actually back this information up uh, with solid data of how over usage of, of the internet is affecting people. Their study uh, showed that 85% of undergraduate students actually use social networking sites. This was back in 2008. I think that percent is probably higher, but 85% is still staggering. What is concerning is that the fact of these students uh, is the way they communicate daily. The current generation of, uh, of college students have been accustomed to using social media sites since they've been growing up in their teens. And they really cannot live without communication. And that's, that's a problem because we're having an effect here of, of global society, of how we communicate at any level. And again, I'm using the United States as an example. But this can be found in Europe, in Asia, in all the countries that have internet around the world. What he does in his article, he, um, which is actually an abstract of his book, he delivers a good balance between positive and negatives. Because the key here is that even though we can find risk of using internet technology, we shall not forget that the great progress that we've made, we get information instantaneously, we can communicate with people far away from us, family, loved ones, and those are great benefits. But the problem is overusage. And like I mentioned earlier, it affects communication, how people are communicating in a negative way. So with this massive reach, the internet marketplace, talking more on the economic route, has really expanded, and it would it's expanded to ways that we could never thought of, and it has expanded, especially in social media and advertising, because we have such an amount of people using social media. That's a great venue for marketing teams to really expand on their brand, and they're taking advantage of that. And like I said earlier, 
the politicians are also doing that. They're using that to increase their their uh, information uh, put out to their to their constituents and maybe future voters, and what their policies are. So, with all these discussions of how social media is currently affecting society on a global scale, what what do we think could happen next? Well, I think that social media developments are going to continue to evolve. We're going to continue to find ways to instantaneously communicate. In, uh, we're probably going to get rid of our phones. Uh, already I know that Facebook is, is working on a, on a set of, of classes that you can actually get news feeds on, on, on the actual glasses that you're wearing. Then you have Google Glass, which also wants to provide information straight to your to your um, to your eyes to your eye uh, perspective so the days of taking out your phone may be outdated pretty soon but we'll see what happens what I think is going to happen is the increase of internet usage in the world about 77 percent of the population uh, already have it so there's a there's a good group there that uh, 23 percent actually to be exact that still doesn't have internet so what we can increase is the projection and they're going to do it in poor countries of offering internet and it's going to be 100% probably not but I think that percentage will increase and then eventually it'll, it'll keep keep progressing and hopefully in, just like phones that you can find in practically anywhere in the world the internet will be the same thing so with all that about the future how that's going to progress um, how is this how can we continue to make an interdisciplinary approach well my biggest connection that I made between all the disciplines and how it actually ends up in one is this combination has affected the way communicate in so many levels from personal to commercial political and economical social media and advances in mobile technology essentially have uh, if we do not connect all these different advances in personal commercial political economic social media um, all these would would really affect the social behavior and political progress in, in our country and in our world really. Then the political aspect, I would like to point out that the enhancements of social media uh, have really improved the way politicians can really put on information to, to their people. And they're targeting a younger audience as well because again, we have almost 80% of all college students using social media, so they have a way of actually attracting that to them. Uh, the, in my opinion, I think that the first time we really saw this political gain in social media was during 2008 when President Obama got elected. He really took advantage of social media and targeted a younger, younger, um, younger group because of his um, uh, thoughts of progress and change, hope and change. He really uh, got that younger generation of voters that would normally, be, normally not be interested in voting and caught their attention. So that was really helpful to him to get that, that vote and get elected in 20, 2008 and 2012 as well. And this has happened at the same time that Facebook was gaining popularity. I think it was released around 2006 and about 2008 it really started to kick off really strong and that was the same time of the first election. So everything happened really parallel to each other. And I think that's 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 important to note. Uh, today practically all political parties, political candidates basically have to have either a Twitter account, Facebook account to really put out the information. So now it's really a standard for public affairs in that, in that, uh, that business, essentially. So social impact is another interdisciplinary approach that I think is important to know because um, we could also, among the many impacts social media and advanced technology can be attributed to, I would like to focus for a second on the way information is delivered and how that has impacted public opinion worldwide. We've seen that a lot with news uh, from the Egyptian protests a couple of years ago to controversial rulings of certain legal cases. Um, really, people have an instant gratification uh, need and they want information right here right now something just happened we had to find what happened who was who was guilty who was not guilty and sometimes that's really impossible to happen but um social media is, is a dangerous tool because you can spread rumors that are not factual and uh even though we want to know the get to the bottom of everything we still have to conduct investigations to find out what actually happened so that's dangerous for for the social uh social impact of of, of global society because it can be dangerous. Um, 
from we see this a lot with with uh, celebrities that certainly have, are rumored dead uh, with death death hoaxes um, and some misguidance from news organizations on both sides of the aisle. They they will put out information without knowing all the facts just because they want to provide information to that audience that really needs it. Um, economic impact is huge because uh, the advertisement. Uh, Business is, is very, very important in social media and internet as a whole. And combining political and social impacts, they really make a strong economic impact. From fundraising, from political parties to advertising, the economics behind the increase of social media are clear and apparent because we see it all the time and the, the in advertising in industry is really critical here. I would also like to talk about the cultural impact. Even though some... Uh, countries want to censor the advancement of technology on the internet. We see these with countries like North Korea uh, or, or China that censor some, certain websites. The global impact, excuse me, th of those advances in general, aside from those uh, specific countries that are kind of limited, has really affected the entire world. These advances have deferred by having methods of communicating instantly to anybody in the world and has opened up to realities that we would not be aware of. And I think that's why these uh, countries don't want to do that, because once people get uh, know that how r really bad their situation is, they may st start to protest and, and, and ignore the, uh, the dictatorship that they're currently in. So it's important that uh, that progress continues in the world. Uh, I hope you enjoyed my presentation, and uh, I wish you the best of luck. Take care.